And because you know who I really think that gets played really low are providers. You know, we have a lot of providers in our community that help young children. And, um, you know, I know the teachers and, you know, in the schools and everything. But, you know, if we could really take out that, I'm just thinking of a person who helped my children. Right. You know, all of them. She's yeah. been there for all of them before they went to Head Start and Kindergarten. Make sure um, you thank her this week. Yeah, <laughs> about, yeah. And if you guys see me walking around with this little yeah. red polka dot bow, that is for. That this, is the this week. symbol for the, of the young child. That's right. You know, another great program that's out in the community. It's um, with the Waterloo Schools. It's the Reading Buddy Program. Hmm. It's an hour a week of your time to connect with an elementary school age child and spend an hour with them in the classroom reading with them. So that's one way that um, you can get involved all year long. Okay, and are there certain activities going on for the 22nd and 28th? Well, I, I know for the week earlier in the week, there were the proclamations at the, um, with the mayor and, mm -hmm. and city council meetings that were done, as Brooke said, in Waterloo, Evansdale, Cedar Falls. Um, red polka dot ribbons um, mm -hmm. are being shared with the community to wear in support of um, this week. Um, I believe there's going to be a human interest story yeah. with the Waterloo Courier. On our family, our local family nest program. It used mm -hmm. to be known as Stork's Nest, and if you hear a uh, family nest, uh, that's the program that we talked about in the Courier this week. Oh, it changed? Yes, the name of it changed. Wow. But it's still the same services, okay. my, is my understanding. Um, yeah, so just a lot of great initiatives. Also, um, there is children's artwork hanging up at our local YMCA off of University Avenue. Um, and with our flyer that we talked about earlier, Toral, that talks about Week of the Young Child. And we're going to try to expand that next year so we have children's artwork up during this Week of the Young Child just as a way to raise awareness at different businesses and youth serving agencies. So we're going to try to expand that next year too. Okay. Get the okay. work out some more. And um, I think I remember last year, did you release balloons? Yes, at the See. park, we did. So yeah, yes. I was there. Yes. <laughs> so we're not releasing balloons this year? <laughs> uh, not that I'm aware of, no. Okay, okay, okay. So um, uh, what can we, uh, what can the community do to support uh, this effort? Well, just continue to, I mean, say thank you to, to anyone that you can think of that's been an important part of your child's life, not only teachers, but providers, mm -hmm. um, any mentor, any neighbor, anyone that maybe has been important. Um, and read to your children. Um, stress the importance of education to them. Read to them often. Encourage them to read. Mm -hmm. And Take I think to the library. Yeah, I think you bring up a really good point that the most important thing for a child is just spending time with them and reading. What a great way to do that. Yeah. When I was listening to KBBG this morning, um, our station manager Bev Douglas has stated on there to give your child a good education, and and she had no clue that you guys were going to be here today. But it was just the fact that her mind was already there. Sure. You know, wanting our parents and our providers to to keep them with learning and books and reading, to give them a good education or else they lose out. Definitely. And then we know that the importance of reading is any job they get on, they're gonna have to read. Mm -hmm. And so that's why we stress this show, um, that we sit down and read with our kids and we go to the libraries and, you know, books, you don't have to buy expensive books, I found out. You know, how many kids I have now, found out that I have to buy those expensive books, right. but just taking out their time to buy a good book and sit down with my children, exactly. it, it takes that a long way. You know, they're excited. They go to school. They go to church. They go in the community. And tell everyone that mommy and daddy read with me. And they get and excited, excited about excited. reading. Yeah. yeah. Excited and they want to read more. Yeah. <laughs> I know Toral while Christy and I were here, we definitely wanted to thank Cedar Valley's Promise and the empowerment funding that our Early Childhood Committee receives. So. Okay. Yes. Any more shout outs before we take out of here? <laughs> we we want to thank um, uh, Christy Weber and Brooke Olson for coming in and, and, and sharing with us Week of the Child. Remember, it's April 22nd, 28th. Remember to go out there and thank parents, teachers, providers, and any other adults who have helped young children get a great start in learning. And that 2,000 days between birth and the first day of kindergarten has just really got my attention. You know, when that child is born, Lady D, all the way to... <laughs> 
kindergarten, there is that we need to be doing lifelong impact on physical and emotional well-being, readiness to learn and succeed, and ability to become a productive citizen. I want to thank you for coming here today and hope that you come back. Thank and you for remember, having us. You're welcome. Thank you, Christy, as well. Thank you. And remember that reading unlocks the doors for our future, and parents love your children. See you next week.